So we are with Sandeep Dadlani, who is the Global Chief Digital Officer at Mars, and of course, honoree, lister for the 2022 CIO Next list at Forbes. Congratulations, first of all, on that. Diane, thank you. Thank you from all the Mars associates who are uh, very pleased to be recognized by Forbes because everybody's trying hard to go digital at Mars. They are, and, and one of the things that fascinated me most was this AI festival you had. So first of all, we're talking about a company, it's pet care, it's confectionery, very popular in my house. Why do an AI festival? Mars is a company that's 110 years old, and it has 140,000 associates, all that are deeply emotionally connected to the five principles of Mars. And now, in a business as varied as wet hospitals and pet food and chocolate and so on, you had a situation where AI was considered as a myth, something to be scared of. There were AI pilots everywhere, but people didn't understand AI Scared as Scared because it's coming to take our jobs and make our chocolate, or? Whatever you don't know scares you. And so this was the peak of COVID. It was December 2020, where we brought together a week-long, remote, beautifully immersive experience with everybody in the world. It was Satya Nadella and Andrew Ng and Kai Fu Lee and whoever's who's who in AI. We showcased more than 200 programs in AI that were already live in Mars and scaling. And in the evening, we made everybody go through a basics of AI training. This was open to 140,000 associates, not just for the tech department or the digital department. And the result was a lot of fun, frolic, dancing. And I had, at the end, 10,000 Martians trained on AI. Martians, I love that. We call ourselves Martians because, you know, we're out of the world all the time. So those 10,000 Martians trained on AI and other tens of thousands waiting to learn AI. That meant some level of unlock within the company of how people look at AI as an enabler, as an amplifier, rather than something to be scared of. Well, so tell us what some of the more interesting use cases for AI and machine learning, because it is something that is ubiquitous, but yet we talk about it in the abstract. Yeah, you know, Mars is such a human, uh, huggy, touchy, feely company that we, from the beginning, framed that every AI project will have a human in the center, and with her hairstyle, with her sense of humor, with her accent, and with her passport, which she will retain when she puts on her AI suit, she'll be Wonder Woman, she'll be, he'll be Iron Man, and so on. One of the first use cases we picked up was pricing. And now, due to surgical AI-led pricing and promotions, sales teams for our traditional CPG businesses have unlocked more than a half a billion dollars of value along with their retail partners. From a bottom line perspective, this has shown fantastic progress. AI is being used to simulate R&D innovations, which is crashing cycle times, because R&D innovations in CPG have notoriously long cycle times. And then my favorite is, is an example where in pet health, AI is helping vet radiologists. You see, pet radiologists are one of the rarest species in the world. So we hire them, we train them, we are perhaps the biggest hirer of pet radiologists. But how they detect disease, how they identify problem spots in x-rays and blood tissue samples is an AI problem to solve. Today, that is a product across all our diagnostic centers. We process more than 20 million x-rays, blood tissue samples all over, and we stick to our purpose to make a better world for pets detect diseases early, solve them early. You, I'm sure, are close to your pet, and when you can help make that pet's world better, your life better, that's AI for good. That's purposeful AI at its best. This is among more than a 1,000 AI programs across Mars. So you mentioned um, the pandemic. What has changed? And, and talk a little bit about some of the, both the opportunities and the pain points right now around implementing any of the technological innovation you have? Well, the pandemic has been, you know, in a way, a blessing for adoption and embracing technology. Uh, I think we've just accelerated 100x, which ironically was the whole mission for our digital transformation. We said we'll go 100x faster. It took a pandemic, and we are going 100x faster. But as we turn the corner and now look into the future, we're today faced with five eyes across the world. It's inflation, infection, invasion, 
inventory, which is supply chains, and then interest rates. So when we look at these five challenges for our business, we are literally pointing our AI superpowers to those five things. So think about how AI is helping us predict commodity prices, which helps us with hedging strategies, which help us combat inflation, and so on and so forth. So again, for the board, for the leadership teams, and for the associates on the ground, they look at AI as a, an enabler. In fact, funny story, we once sent out an AI machine learning training meant for 50 tech people. It accidentally went to, went to the whole company. How many I, people did it? 2,000 people signed up the next day. And that just shows that this is a company in motion. We're still learning, we're still stumbling, but a lot more people want to learn it all. How important is it for the board to be cognizant of the technology? And I know you've said you've done some work with the board. Has that been helpful on a granular level? You know, I was really amazed by how the Mars family and the Mars board uh, were so serious about this digital transformation. Uh, I challenged them to actually go through a machine learning training themselves, and they did. Uh, and they did very well, by the way. And I think, you know, the board, the classic board that we think of uh, are not hands-on machine learning artists. They were competitive in that exercise. The leadership team has gone through machine learning training and so on. That shows an ability to set the example for the rest of the enterprise. What's your excuse? Why don't you learn? It, if everybody can learn it, then what's your personal excuse? So I feel that the investments Mars has made in this digital transformation, in the board there is a special digital subcommittee that oversees our digital efforts on a quarterly basis. Um, you know, the CFO drives all the investments in digital transformation. So I feel very good about the way we have been intentional and we have been associate driven in keeping with our five principles. One of the things I think is always interesting in a position like yours and with sort of CIOs writ large is, is culture, because so much of digital transformation is dislodging old habits, it's reducing the fear factor, it's also changing the way teams work. Any advice you've had as to what levers actually make a difference? And I think different companies have different unlocks. For Mars, within a few months I realized that this company is about friendships and love. And no culture disruptor should disrupt that part of the culture. What it needed was a 100x hustle. So our culture story now, we call it friendship, love, and hustle. <laughs> and that's the magical part. And digital adds hustle to it. Digital sometimes adds a little bit of love so to it. So it's an extra layer. Like, don't try to, don't set out to say you're going to change the culture. It's that you're building on the culture, adding a new layer of absolutely in, in a, in acceleration. A, Exactly. In a 110-year-old company that is so successful, why do you want to change actually things that are strengths? To have a wonderful culture where people hug each other, people trust each other, you want to retain that. Actually, I'd argue that probably helps us go faster because I trust you and you trust me. Um, and you don't want to change that. So friendship, love, and hustle. That's our culture. And I I'm love hoping... That. Now, there's always questions about budget, dumb money, smart money. Um, have you experimented with anything that didn't quite work out or any advice you have to help people perhaps leapfrog some of what you had to go through in terms of the pain? Well, I mean, first of all, half of the things we've tried haven't worked out. So we've had lots of failure along the way. And You're so innovating. Uh, that's, that's, that's the hope. Uh, I think the biggest issue for people in my role or for that pe people in, in a change agent sort of role is just to continuously make business value sense. It's easy to get romanticized with the 100X or with the friendship, love, and hustle story, but are you making business sense or are you making an AI investment? An AI investment is useless, but an investment to improve the, pet, uh, the world of pets and the lives of pets, that makes sense. That's what the board is for. That's, what, that's why Mars exists. So our digital investments have increased at an average of I'd say 35 to 50% every year over the last four years. It's interesting when you talk about it making business sense, do you embed your team sort of throughout the organization? Because you tend to think of it as a silo, like, you know, 
hi, I'm, uh, you know, your global chief digital officer, I'm here to help. How do you make it something that is intrinsic to how everybody works? You know, this is such an important question, Diane, because I've seen in my consulting world tech shops and digital shops that stood as a silo that did very well. But then everybody else in the company was like, well, you know, those guys are digital. I'm not digital. I just come here and, and work in the factory and go back. Here, by design, along with the leadership team, we created a form and federate strategy, which means I would help form digital capabilities in the center. But as soon as they scale, I federate it into the segments, into the markets. So today, our goal explicitly, and we are in the process of making sure every market and every segment can do the AI-based pricing themselves. They don't have to come to a central digital department. The talent, some of the talent has, been, has gone from the center into the markets and the segments. That talent has then bred more talent in there and more capabilities. The platforms are controlled a little bit in the center just to create adult supervision around cybersecurity, engineering, and so on. And new capabilities are spouting up. So this form and federate model ensures that all of Mars goes 100x. You know, I think one of the things that's interesting when you talk about 100x, there's so much stress. People have felt like it's we're working 24-7. Um, how can I possibly work faster? How do you communicate the message that tech is an enabler, perhaps to a higher value part of your job, perhaps to taking you to that 100x? Has there been any sort of tactics that you've used that have really sort of helped people understand that this is the accelerator as opposed to you're not hustling enough, you're not doing enough? Well, I mean, it's interesting you say that. I think that the message has been different for different levels. At the ground level, associates are not particularly bothered about the business case and the value drivers at the, at, at and the leadership. And they're digital natives too, right? Probably. But for them, imagery and stories around, maybe I can be like Iron Man, I can retain my bad sense of humor or my accent or my hair set, but when I wear that Iron Man suit, I'm gonna make a dent. And no, Iron Man doesn't work 18 hour days, he works four hour days, but right. in those four hours, he does a lot of damage. Saves the world. So, yeah. so does Wonder Woman. So literally at a 140,000 associate level, those stories, that imagery, substantiated with real examples, and then those associates and speaking to each other, forming sporadic viral user centricity clubs, creates, in my mind, a viral effect. I love that. It's like, it's like you're basically telling people we're gonna enable you to make the impact you came here to make. So one thing, it's sort of as we, Help us look around the corner as to what's next, what's on your radar. You get to go into rooms we don't. What should we be paying attention to? We will uh, launch some of our brand NFTs, uh, and my teams are super busy trying to launch those. Um, and it is not for the sake of launching NFTs. We've, we've figured out that this whole tokenization, blockchain culture, if purposefully used, can create very engaged communities of consumers in the right audiences. And so, you know, crypto could hype up and hype down, NFTs could hype up and hype down. I just found a great way of reaching cohorts of consumers in a new way. So I feel that's gonna be big if meaningfully used. And like every other technology, it'll go through its hype cycle. Um, I think AI for inflation is gonna be used by some people at first, and then many people, if the inflation trend continues. Manage risk and to manage. Exactly, and I think we're just you know, scratching the surface of it and what, at least what I have seen in terms of capabilities, I'm like, gosh, this is competitive. This is gonna be table stakes as such. I think uh, strong companies like Mars investing in and in building multi-sided platforms where you have consumers on one side, suppliers on one side, you have marketplaces, you have partnerships, you have tech partnerships with, you know, we announced partnerships with Microsoft, for example, on digital twins and so on. That will become commonplace, just partnering and creating new sources of revenue, and we are seeing that and so on. So I feel there's, there's innovation in business model, innovation in technology, the, the whole NFT thing, and then, you know, scaling of uh, technologies like AI, all three around the corner, because uh, our challenges are not gonna go away. I think, you know, just look at the last one year. I mean, I think they're gonna multiply 
But with tools like this, I think we can, uh, we can make an end. Great, thank you. Sandeep Dadlani, and of course, 2022 honoree for the Forbes CIO Next List. Thanks very much. Thank you, Forbes. Thank you, Diana.